What's up guys, I hope y'all are doing awesome. So as some of you may know, this is the first original tutorial to drop on this new channel. I split the music and the tutorials in two different channels. So thanks for being here. Make sure to subscribe to support my new effort and let's get right into it. So what I want to talk about today is the room reverb technique. A lot of people on Reddit have been asking me how I achieve this sound, what the goal is, what the process is. First, I'll explain what the technique is and why it works. Afterwards, we'll apply it in the context of a real mix so you can understand how to apply it to your own mix. And afterwards, I'll give you some advanced tips and tricks. We're trying to make all the instruments sound like they were recorded and played in the same space. This is actually the case on a lot of recordings from like the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, when real studios were recording real instruments. People would truly record all the instruments in the same space, so you didn't have to use this technique because the reverb was already baked into the sound. In 2021, though, when you're recording your vocals in your room, you're using a synth like Serum to make your chords, and your drums are sourced from a weird recording in the German bunker, you got to think about this and make them sound like they belong together. Compression, saturation, limiting are all great techniques to help with this, but the room reverb technique is, in my opinion, the one that makes the huge difference. Right now we're looking at this random studio room, but it can be this room. Or in a room like this. Or a room like this. You get what I'm saying, right? You're trying to craft a realistic space for your sounds to live in. I just fired up FL Studio to show you how to apply this technique to your mix. Please be aware the software and the plugins you're using has no impact whatsoever on the result of this technique. You just have to understand the concept and how to make it happen. All right, so I put together this simple four bar loop. this choir chant we have a little yell vocal we have some serum chords and 808 and some drums by the way the 808 i'm using in this beat is created from scratch in serum it's super easy and gives you so much more power than using samples tutorial for this right here so let's make them all glue together with some room reverb start by making a dedicated sand for the room reverb always use this effect as a sand never an insert my favorite room reverb which is valhalla room again any reverb you want to use that can generate a short realistic space that you like the sound of you'll be good to go so we'll start basic here just with the drums Take all the drums and make them output sound into the room reverb. For the reverb settings, I like to use the math technique I showed in my other video, which allows you to have a pre-delay and a decay time that are actually synced to your tempo. So let's do that right now. Tempo of 128, let's input that. I think we're gonna be using small room. Let's try that out. If that doesn't work, let's try tight ambiance. Okay, so I punched in the values for small room. Let's get some depth going in there. Depth in Valhalla room is the late part of the reverb, kind of the decay. That already sounds pretty good and it sounds tight. You don't want this thing to be washed out and go on forever unless that's the sound you're going for but in most cases you want a small tight sound now let's send all of our tracks in there and see how that sounds Often when you're using reverb in this setting, for example, or in any setting, less is more. And it's important to know how to dial back this effect, make it more subtle, make it more live in the back of the mix. You don't want it taking up too much space or making stuff muddy. Another great thing about using this as a send is you can easily dial back on certain parts of the mix. For example, here, I don't want my bass to be on the reverb send too much or my kick. I still want a little bit of this living in there, but not the whole thing. So here's width. And this is without the reverb. To me, the difference is not major, it's subtle, but this sounds a bit too dry and it sounds like the elements don't mesh well together.
In order to customize the room and make it your own, the obvious choice is to manipulate the reverb plugin you're using and the time values for the pre-delay and the decay. These are the values that are have the biggest impact on your sound. I talked about the tight ambiance values. Let's try them out. What I'll do since I'm in FL Studio, this will drop down, save preset as, and I will duplicate my plugin so I can customize stuff and compare A to B the different versions. So here's the very tight ambiance. And here's the one we had before, the small room. Obviously, I exaggerated the volume of the reverb, but I think I'm liking the tight ambiance more. The next step is to EQ your reverb. And since it's a send, it's so easy to do. You will just load up an EQ plugin. Personally, I EQ after the reverb. Some people advocate for EQing before the reverb, but it's just not my thing. And I will high pass my signal to remove that mud. You have to keep in mind that since you're high passing the whole send, you're introducing more high end information than low end into your mix. In order to compensate for that, you can boost the bass elements a little. If you're an advanced user, you're probably using a lot of sends already for your reverbs, your delays and whatnot. I recommend you also route these into the room reverb. So I have a delay send right here. What I would do is I would send it to the master like I normally would, but I will also send it to the room. It'll make it sound more cohesive as well. Again, if you're an advanced user, you're probably using a lot of buses in your mixer. That creates the issue that if you route the bus into the room, you lose control on how much room you want on each each of your elements. I figured out a workaround for that. I made it full screen so you can understand better. So I would have all my drums going into my drum bus and this will be going out to the master. But I wanna have some room reverb on this, right? I can route my drum bus into my room reverb, but in that case, I lose the control on how much kick I want into the room versus how much snare I want into the room. To fix this situation, take your room reverb and move it before your drum bus route your elements in there. Now you can control how much reverb is on them and route the room reverb inside the drum bus. Obviously it'll be affected by any effect you have on your drum bus, but I think that's fine. It'll give it even more flavor and it'll make it mesh even better with the rest of the drum bus. What you'll do next is create another reverb scent for the rest of your mix or for any bus you want to process in this manner. Make sure the parameters are the same so the room stays consistent. Something you can do in Pro Tools, but not in FL Studio right now is link the parameters of a plugin so it follows another instance of a plugin. If I change the size of the reverb on one of my buses, it'll change it on all the buses that are linked. Hopefully one day we can have that setting. Final piece of advice here, try to make your sounds as dry as possible from the start. If you're using a VST and there's reverb on the patch, turn that off. Craft your own hall reverb, route a lot of elements in there and route that reverb back into the room. It'll make your mix sound so much better and so much more cohesive. If you're using samples, for example, on Splice, which I do a lot, try to get the dry version of the samples as well as the wet. The dry version is so much more flexible. You have so much more power once you know what you're doing. So that's gonna be it for today's video. Experiment with this technique, make it your own. It took me some time to understand how to use it properly. Always think of a realistic space that's the focus here. If you enjoyed the video or you learned something, make sure to subscribe. There's going to be more of these types of videos coming up. Advanced stuff. It's hard to learn, but it really pays off. Cheers, guys.